The lawyer of Donald Trump's former lawyer, so a Trump lawyer's lawyer, appeared on MSNBC with Ari Melber on The Beat for what would turn out to be a brutal, brutal interview for this individual, Charles Burnham. And to kind of give you the necessary context before diving into some clips from this, John Eastman, you might remember, is the lawyer or one of the lawyers that Mike Pence referred to as a crackpot lawyer who was around Donald Trump in the moment where he was attempting to overturn the 2020 election results. And so now John Eastman has become very relevant to the political conversation because in the most recent indictment of Donald Trump, there are unnamed co-conspirators that are told about, that are described in this indictment. And so when it goes through and explains this scheme in the conspiracy, that assumes there's multiple people and it talks about these multiple unnamed co-conspirators. And at this point in time, they're also unindicted. And so a lot of people are then curious, who are these people who Trump was conspiring with that aren't yet being named? One of them is assumed to be John Eastman, who was one of the lawyers around Donald Trump helping him concoct what potentially were unlawful actions to overturn the 2020 election results and keep Trump in power despite his 2020 election loss. And so John Eastman now, is having his representation, his lawyer, go on MSNBC and get asked about both John Eastman's actions and how this relates to Trump in the uh, moment that we're in now, which is Trump being indicted for a third time for this very scheme that John Eastman was a part of. And John Eastman himself could be in legal hot water down the road as well. Um, very, very interesting. And if John Eastman, again, as Mike Pence called him, was a crackpot lawyer. You can imagine the lawyer of a crackpot lawyer is probably a crackpot lawyer himself. <laughs> and you can totally see just the wild, ridiculous moment we're in, just based on the first part of this interview I'll show you, where Ari Melber just wants to lay the groundwork. Okay, let's just get some basic facts on the table that relate to the legal troubles that Trump is in, your client could possibly be in as well. The 2020 election results, you accept them, right? and instantly everything already falls apart with this Charles Burnham. Put aside some time for this. I want to start with a, a couple quick things and then, and then get into the case. Um, but first and foremost, Donald Trump lost the 2020 election. Uh, you accept that fact? Uh, well, look, there's a lot, large portion of the country that has issues with the 2020 election. There are still discussion about things that went on. Large uh, portion of the country of believes in ghosts or horoscopes. I'm asking you, do you accept the results of the election that Donald Trump lost? Well, I'm just here as an attorney representing a client, but I think the important thing is... I, it's, uh, and I'll yeah. keep moving. I want to give you the opportunity to answer it. It's a very... Very nervous and sweaty, <laughs> which, you know, I have an issue with him for the things he'll say, not his performance on television, I get that it can be difficult, but it is notable that he's clearly very uncomfortable. Very easy question to answer. If, if, if you can't answer it, I've got other questions. Well, my personal opinions are rather neither, neither here nor there. They're no better than anybody else's, but I would like the opportunity to address the latest news and anything you think your viewers oh, we'll would definitely, like to be interested in. We yeah. will definitely mm -hmm. get to that. I just want to get to a couple of these sort of straightforward. Okay, so can't acknowledge the results of the last election. Yikes. Uh, then we get to the second moment. This one I'd like to start is I'm glad you brought up precedent because the one thing you've never heard in any of the discussions about John Eastman in the past two years is what he did is wrong because it violates the Supreme Court's decision in Smith versus Jones, let's say. There is no Smith versus Jones. There's no Smith, there's no Jones. These are issues of first impression, right? No court has ever considered this. And so what Dr. Eastman did is exactly what he's retained to do. He's a constitution. So he'll try to lay out the case for why John Eastman did nothing wrong. He just gave Trump some advice on how if he wanted to, he could do a coup and here's how you would do it. And then they started doing it and they luckily failed. And so Trump's former lawyer's lawyer is saying, uh, I don't know why that's cracking me up, is saying that this was all new stuff. So there's no precedent for you to be saying that somehow John Eastman did something wrong because it was all original ideas. And uh, so find me a precedent that proves he was acting unlawfully or incorrectly in some way. Ari Melber will nicely fact check that law professor. He looked at precedent. He looked at history. He looked at the historical examples, presented the various options, and then recommended at the end what he thought uh, 
was the best option consistent with his client's interest in the law, which well, was that, simply to delay the certification. That's not quite true, sir. Uh, he mm -hmm. may have done that at times. I, I can't speak to everything he ever did. Uh, but mm -hmm. the problem for, for you is in this indictment, which has all this evidence, and we've seen other, other portions from the congressional probe, he didn't just do that. And when you say matter of first impression, uh, it's not as if this is some new novel thing, like an artificial intelligence, uh, you know, quandary for the Supreme Court. These are matters that, quite to the contrary of what you're claiming tonight, have been so thoroughly litigated um, that there's no daylight. There's no question that uh, politicians can't just declare themselves automatically reelected. That That's not even in the bounds of what the Supreme Court bothers to rule on. So you tonight, you sound like you're trying to say that is a virtue. It's right. It's ridiculous that I don't. OK, I don't know what I expected the defense to be of Trump. But I didn't expect this, and some of the talking points to defend John Eastman or Trump or whoever, based on this larger scheme, are just baffling me that that's the direction they're going. One of them being, it was just his freedom of speech. What? In the indictment, it says it's not about what he said, it's about what he did, and sometimes what he directed with his words other people to do. But it was the actions, the scheme, and the potential unlawful conspiracy that is getting him into legal trouble, not him claiming the election was stolen or anything like that. And so the fact that they went in that direction obviously is dishonest, but it's also just a weak, it's a weak defense. But then there, him saying, I mean, can you point to precedent that proves you're not allowed to just keep yourself in power despite a democratic election? Well, all of the cases that have ever involved our election processes and the results of elections and our entire democratic process and all the laws surrounding who goes into power when and how the election is set up and all of that, yeah, sort of proves that you're not supposed to then violate all those things. The fact that we have laws that say this is how elections are supposed to go, this is when this person is supposed to take over that position of power. This is when the transition is supposed to happen, etc. cetera. Uh, these are the voting rights that are supposed to be respected. Proves that in trying to overthrow all of that, you would be disenfranchising voters and uh, preventing the lawful processes that are outlined in the law and uh, preventing the governmental process from moving forward, such as the certification and breaking the law. If you're trying to throw out all of the laws and just make up your new ones about trump gets to say that he's president if he wants to then that could potentially be unlawful and that's what's being alleged here so i guess indeed you're right that this is unprecedented but there's plenty of precedent that proves to us such as our entire election system you probably shouldn't just stay the president if you lose with the lawful process that we have set up with our elections. And then last moment we'll look at. Understood. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying today that he committed no crimes and he, oh, sure. first of all, hasn't been charged. If charged, he would be legally presumed innocent. Um, and yet someone who at times has had a different view of what you just said is John Eastman. Uh, he took the position after Jan 6, and I'm gonna sort of go in reverse, starting with what mm -hmm. was kind of circulating after uh, the actual insurrection and go, go deeper into it and you'll get time. But interestingly, mm -hmm. we have, uh, a secret email that sort of leaked where he says to Giuliani, I've decided I should be on the pardon list if that's still in the works. And so my question for you is, which crimes do you think he was worried about being indicted for? Such a good question. We acknowledge John Eastman, he hasn't been charged with anything yet. And if he is, he's presumed innocent. But since your stance is going to be that no matter what he's charged with, he's innocent and you have that right. Why is it that he thought he needed a pardon? Oh, sure. I mean, who can even start? I mean, you remember the atmosphere in those, that time period after January 6th, the media speculation, the accusations going back and forth about all sorts of things. Any reasonable person under those circumstances whether they were innocent or guilty, and particularly someone innocent as John Eastman was, would only prudently take that step if it was available to them. So I don't you think see there's anything that, again, surprising I'm, about that at all. You, you see that as kind of standard. Everybody wants a pardon. Uh, not everyone, as you know, indeed the vast majority of people, best we can tell, who served in the Trump administration, didn't seek pardons. It would seem especially... Yeah, so he's saying, well, he just thought he was going to be unfairly targeted. 
Okay. I think it's because, and as Ari Melber is alluding to, he was worried that some of the advice he was giving, the plan he was concocting, the scheme he was helping to implement, that would have kept someone president despite the results of the election, uh, could have violated the law and wanted a pardon on his way out to make sure he wasn't held accountable for that. Truly wild stuff. The Trump lawyer's lawyer is uh, not doing so well in his public defense of Trump and John Eastman. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show hours before all the clips are able to be uploaded to the YouTube channel, plus get the bonus show on the weekends, you can do so by going to LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership. That's LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership, and there's a link in the description.